Hello. This training, Supporting Multilingual Learners for Paraprofessionals in Bilingual Education, is a one-hour training designed for teacher aides, assistants, and other paraprofessionals who work in bilingual education programs and with English language learners. This training aligns with moving to the next level, one voice, one vision, one mission framework that guides the Buffalo Public School District. Specifically, this training focuses on servicing our bilingual children who are of significant need and attention in the classroom while also working to establish rigorous elementary schools, which is where all of our bilingual programs are housed. This slide highlights the three-year success plan for Buffalo Public Schools. This training fits several components of this plan, including holding high expectations for all students with rigorous instruction and providing ongoing professional learning opportunities to ensure that you are prepared to support students, specifically those in bilingual education programs. This is the multilingual house from the Division of Multilingual Education, where all multilingual learners have access to high quality educational opportunities as they work towards becoming bilingual, biliterate, and successful in college and in life as members of an increasingly diverse global society. Our house is split into five different areas. Today's training will focus on the green, providing professional learning opportunities for all stakeholders, which today are our teacher aides, assistants, and paraprofessionals working with bilingual students. By taking this course, you are learning more about the important frameworks of bilingual education and how to support bilingual education as a paraprofessional. The Division of Multilingual Education, or the DME, strives to create learning opportunities that will enhance the capacity of Buffalo Public School employees. This course is designed to give you an overview and understanding of bilingual education through the lens of a paraprofessional. The pictures, information, and statements in this course derive from a variety of sources, as cited throughout the training and referenced at the end of this presentation. The DME makes every effort to provide you with the most updated and accurate information. The course content will be updated yearly or as we are aware of new guidance or information. There are three objectives for today's professional development. Number one, participants will describe the three pillars of dual language bilingual education. Number two, participants will identify bilingual education programs offered in the Buffalo Public School System. Number three, participants will describe one or two practices that paraprofessionals can utilize to best support emergent bilinguals in the classroom. What is dual language education? Dual language education is a form of bilingual education where students learn literacy and content in two languages. Dual language education is a long-term additive bilingual and cross-cultural program model that consistently uses two languages for content, instruction, learning, and communication, where students develop high levels of bilingual, biliterate, academic, and cross-cultural competencies. Dual language is a branch of bilingual education. There are many variations of bilingual education in the state and across the country. We will focus today on dual language, as this structure is the primary model used in our K-6 bilingual schools here in the Buffalo Public School System. Los Pilares de Educación Bilingüe, the Bilingual Education Pillars. Dual language education is based on three pillars, bilingualism and biliteracy, grade level academic achievement, and sociocultural competency. 
dual language programs need to incorporate all three of these pillars in their program design and implementation. Paraprofessionals should be aware of these three pillars and know how they impact the classroom and a bilingual school. The first pillar of dual language education is bilingualism and biliteracy. The goal of all bilingual programs, especially dual language programs, is to develop students speaking, reading, and writing in two languages equally. In Buffalo Public Schools, our dual language programs are all based on Spanish and English models. We want to see academic and conversational language in both languages of study. A key of dual language is that no one language is viewed as superior to another. Both languages should be treated with respect, dignity, and equity by teachers, staff, and students. The second pillar of dual language education is grade level academic achievement. We must hold high standards for students and staff in both languages of instruction. Students enrolled in dual language education will become proficient in both languages for reading, writing, speaking, and listening. We must ensure that our instruction and supports meet the academic demands of their grade level in both Spanish and English. Research has shown over the years that students enrolled in strong dual language education programs outpace their monolingual learning peers in all content areas. Importantly, English language learners who are enrolled in dual language schools have much better academic outcomes than their peers in English only programs. The third pillar of dual language education is sociocultural competence. Language and culture have a direct relationship. Part of language learning and development is to also understand the cultural norms, differences, and expectations of the speakers of that language. Sociocultural competence is important to develop in our bilingual classrooms. What does this look like in the classroom? Using culturally rich curriculum in both languages. Acknowledging, identifying, and valuing cultural and linguistic differences of students and staff. Developing students' abilities to define their linguistic and cultural identities as a bilingual person. And creating opportunities for students to showcase their identities, cultures, and languages. Dual language education has a few different models. In Buffalo Public Schools, there are several different program options that are used in our dual language schools. On the next few slides, we will discuss the different types of programs and then show you how Buffalo Public Schools has implemented dual language in our schools. Given that our bilingual programs here are English and Spanish only, please note that the following slides will reference only Spanish and English bilingual schools. However, there are many bilingual programs across the country and state that include Mandarin, Arabic, Yiddish, Hebrew, French, Bengali, and many more. Dual Language Education Structure Part 1 one-way versus two-way programs. In dual language education, student demographics are vital in determining the type of dual language program. In the one-way model on the left-hand part of the slide, students from one language group receive instruction in two languages. This can mean that students who natively speak English are learning both English and Spanish, or it can mean that students who natively speak Spanish are learning both English and Spanish. The important piece of one-way dual language is that all students are native speakers of the same home 
language, whether that is English or Spanish. In a two-way program on the right-hand side of the screen, students from two different language groups are learning bilingually. You will have a mix of students who speak native English or native Spanish in the same classroom. Both language groups are both learning two languages. Dual Language Education Structure, Part 2 language allocation using Spanish and English. In addition to considering the demographics of students in a dual language classroom, we also consider the language allocation of a dual language program. Language allocation refers to the way language is used in the classroom. Think of language allocation as one of these questions. What language is used in each different subject area? Or how often is the teacher using Spanish versus English? There are different models for determining how much content is taught in each language. One model is referred to as the 90-10. The other is referred to as the 50-50. In the 90-10 model, shown on the left-hand side of your screen, Students start their academic career in kindergarten or pre-K with the majority of instruction taught in Spanish. 90% of content taught will be in Spanish and just 10% in English their first year. Each year after that, this percentage shifts by 10%. For example, it will then move in first grade to 80% Spanish and 20% English. 70% Spanish and 30% English in second grade, and the shift continues until both languages are taught half the time. This model is more common in one-way programs, but can be used in either. In the 50-50 model, students immediately start learning in both languages for half the time, or 50% of their day in each language, and it continues that way throughout their academic career in dual language, regardless of the grade level. This chart shows the different models and language allocation policies in place at dual language programs in the Buffalo Public School System. There are seven schools offering dual language education programs in grades K through six. While Lafayette International High School does not have a one or two way model, there are many bilingual teachers in the school that teach content in different languages, teach Spanish literacy, or use home language supports across content through the use of academic coaches to continue students' academic growth in their native languages. Take a moment to reflect. What program model do you currently work with? What program models have you worked with in the past? Now that you have a strong foundation in what comprises a dual language program in Buffalo Public Schools, we will dive into how we best support students in these types of programs. Remember, the key to dual language is language itself. We will review three different strategies for supporting language learners. These strategies can be implemented in any language. The first strategy we will learn about today is using sentence frames and starters in the classroom. What are sentence frames and starters? Frames and starters are templates for sentences that can be open-ended or include fill-in-the-blank style structures. They can be created to help students start a piece of writing, respond to questions orally, or jumpstart a group activity. The most important component of sentence frames is that they provide a structure of language for students. It takes some of that linguistic load off so that students can focus fully on content. Remember, the examples here are in English, but they can be used in any language of instruction with the same impact. Why do sentence frames and starters support language learners? Frames and starters provide students with a way to initiate speaking or writing in the target language. When students see a sentence or frame or starter, it helps clarify instructions for the task at hand. 
Frames and starters also support language development and encourage students to use more complex grammar, language, or vocabulary. The examples on this page demonstrate how sentence frames and starters can be used for different purposes and content areas. The compare and contrast template on the right hand side clearly shows a structure for writing. The agree and disagree sentence frames seem designed for oral conversation in small groups regarding whatever topics students are learning about. The math sentence frames in the top left give students the tools to have an academic conversation about mathematics in English. Remember, while these examples are in English, sentence frames and starters can be provided for students in any language. Students in bilingual classrooms should see sentence frames and starters in both Spanish and English in both rooms. Students typically grasp the concept of sentence frames and starters relatively quickly. For students who are still new to using a language, they may need some explicit practice and teaching. However, most students understand the purpose of them with just one or two quick examples by the teacher or the paraprofessional in the room. When do I use sentence frames and starters? Sentence frames and starters can be used in any subject area and truly at any time. You can plan them ahead of time or create them in the moment based on student needs. For example, if students are writing an essay, you may provide some sentence starters at the beginning of each paragraph to help students jumpstart the writing process. If the teacher is asking students to discuss a topic as a group, each student might be given a sentence starter to ensure they engage in the activity. Sentence frames and starters often address the common phrase, I don't know how to start, from students. It takes away that initial hesitation. We will look at multiple examples on the following few slides in more depth. How do I create them? Start with the overall goal or purpose of the task at hand and craft a sentence frame or starter to help students meet the goal. If the purpose of an activity is to compare and contrast, give students the words we use to compare and contrast, such as the blank are similar because, or they are different because, in content areas, it may be helpful to have them posted and used daily. In math class, it may be a standard for students to say, the solution to the problem is by having that sentence starter posted in the room and used every day. Teachers and paraprofessionals often provide sentence frames and starters automatically for language learners without noticing that they're doing it during conversations about content. Intentionality is often needed for writing responses, though. On the next few slides, we will look at several examples of sentence frames and starters in various content areas. Remember, as a paraprofessional, you are able to work with the teacher directly to create sentence frames and starters or create your own while supporting students in small groups or one-on-one. -on -one. In this example, we will look at math class and how to use some sample starters and frames in the given scenario. Scenario. A teacher asks students to explain to their desk partner how they solved a two-step problem. The academic goal is that students will explain the two steps they took to solve the problem in the correct order. A sentence starter for this would be, I solved the problem using two steps. First, I, and students would continue responding. For example, a student in a second grade math class might respond, first, I added the numbers two and three. Next, I subtracted the number one. The solution I found to the problem is four. A student in sixth grade may take this same sentence frame, but include more complex math or steps, such as, first, I added 3,458 and 10,582. Next, I multiplied the number by 75 hundredths. The solution I found to the problem is, and finish the answer from there. This scenario, in science, students are completing a lab. 
As part of the scientific process, students must make observations. Scenario. A teacher asks students to write down observations made during a science experiment where students mix baking soda and vinegar. The teacher asks them to use four of their senses, such as sight or feel, in their observations. <clears throat> Academic goal. Students note changes that occur when the two ingredients are mixed. Sentence frame. When the vinegar and baking soda mixed, I saw, I heard. When the two ingredients mixed, I smelled. Baking soda feels blank, vinegar feels blank, but when mixed, they feel. You may notice that the complicated spelling and more complex language functions are taken care of here. Students truly only need adjectives to complete these frames. Most students will likely know terms like bubbles, fizzing, popping, bad, good, slimy, rough, powdery. This series of frames allows students to intimately focus on the experiment results and observations rather than trying to figure out how to write down what they're thinking internally. Writing is a challenging task for learners of any language. Sentence starters and frames can quell confusion and allow students the freedom to think without the constraints of language. Scenario. The teacher asks students to write a short summary of the story. Students must include characters, setting, and three events in order. Academic goal. Students understand the story elements and can write a logical summary. Sentence frame. In the beginning of the story, blank and blank go, then they, at the end of the story, they. This is an example of an elementary writing frame for students who need a lot of language support to complete the writing. Students with more advanced language skills may only need something very basic like in the story to get them started. Reflect. Have you seen sentence frames used before? How can you work with the classroom teacher to implement sentence frames and starters? Visuals, pictures, and graphics. All learners benefit from the use of pictures, images, and visual supports. Multilingual learners in dual language programs can significantly benefit from multiple means of representation and the availability of both of their languages on anchor charts, posters, and graphics in the classroom. Connecting visuals and graphics with words, regardless of the language, can help students relate concepts with the language of instruction. Visuals are a great resource for bilingual education students for teaching routines, procedures, and subject area content. Visuals can be used to give directions, show a daily routine, reinforce an academic content, or simply relate language with a concept. Visuals, pictures, and graphics. Visuals should relate directly to the text they represent. In bilingual education classrooms, the goal is to always include both English and Spanish alongside the visuals. This connection to text is what fuels understanding of the content presented as an image. Using bilingual cue cards to help students understand basic directions or routines, regardless of the language of instruction is important. Label them bilingually using the key below consistently. Spanish should be written in rojo, English written in blue. Here are some more examples of the bilingual color coding system alongside different visuals. Please note, Spanish is always in red and English is always in blue. Be cognizant of which language is placed on top. As a principle, if the language of instruction using the visual is Spanish, then Spanish should be the language listed first. If English is the language being used with the image, English should be first. Using the bilingual color coding system, visuals and graphics can help students across content areas to understand important concepts. Reflect. Think about concepts or routines your students may struggle with during the day. What visuals can you use to support them? 
home language as an asset. Learning in one language is transferred to learning in another language. The only barrier between that transfer is language. Students benefit from reading, writing, or speaking about a new topic or concept in their home language first. We can use student knowledge in their home language to understand concepts in their new language. What do we mean by leveraging the home language in the classroom as an asset? Students might read a summary of a book in Spanish before they read the entire book in English. We can encourage students to write their initial thoughts or notes in their home language, even if the language of class is English. We can allow students with the same home language to clarify instruction or discuss a concept in their home language before completing a task or an assignment. And we want to encourage literacy in both the students' home languages and those that we are learning in at school. There are many ways in which students can access home language understanding to bridge knowledge with their new language. It is important to remember though, that teachers and paraprofessionals in the room should maintain the language of the instruction. If you are working in a Spanish speaking room, maintain Spanish as much as possible. If you're working in an English speaking room, maintain English as much as possible. However, students should be free to use whichever language necessary to help them understand content and interact with it. Being given permission to speak and jot notes in their language preferences will help them master the content in the both languages that they're studying. Reflect. Think of the classrooms you work in. What topics or subject areas might students most benefit from talking to a peer in their home language before working independently? Summarizing statements. Dual language education in Buffalo seeks to instruct students to grade level proficiency in both Spanish and English. There are many models of dual language education that can be used with several different options available in Buffalo. There are several strategies that paraprofessionals can use to support students in learning content and language. Log on to Schoology or go through the course in PGS and find bilingual education for paraprofessionals. Under the green folder titled Course Information, you will find two discussion boards. The final steps to completion are as follows. Step one, complete discussion one and discussion two. Then return to the course homepage on Schoology and answer the completion question in the red folder in the image below. The course completion question will not appear until you have answered both discussion questions and watched the entire PowerPoint video.